traditional quilt blocks often have unusual names. As an example, here's the hearts and gizzards design, a pattern that can be traced back to the late 1800s. The gizzard shape opposite the recognizable heart motif is not something many of us would recognize, yet the following curved design still bears that name and is the feature of today's program. Over 100 years ago, this design was created with difficulty, but today you're going to learn a carefree approach. Quilt with Carefree Curves, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Let's start by taking a close-up look of the Hearts and Gizzards quilt. You can see part of it on my board. And the block is on point, and I have two sizes of hearts, and this section is known as the gizzard shape. And it's relatively easy to put together a carefree method, but in years gone by, it wasn't quite as easy as the way I'm going to show you. One of the traditional ways of doing it at least as of late, is to cut a piece of freezer paper that presses onto fabric the finished size of the heart or half of the heart shape along the top, and then you can see that it's cut straight with the shape along the sides. This extra width at the top that you cut, about fourth of an inch is pressed under to get the shape, and then the freezer paper is removed. And after you peel it off, which I'm going to just assume that you can figure that out, peel that off, you have to double check that it's still pressed under and then position it onto the a half square triangle. And you have to do a little manipulating so it all fits into shape. What I'm going to share with you now, instead of using paper or, or freezer paper, is to work with fusible interface and kind of a sewing technique or sewing product is going to be stitched around the top, trimmed and turned and pressed to the wrong side and so you have a nice round shape. It follows in line, if you missed our first program of this series, you can watch it online, how we did quarter circle squares or making a drunkard's path, for example. I'm using a template. Now you can use your favorite template. This is the one that I'm going to be using that has five different options from big blocks. This is a 16 and a half inch block, the same size that you see behind me with two same sized hearts placed into it and goes down to a 14 and a half inch and you can see the gradated sizes. And then four blocks create a design. So as I place these four blocks around, You'll also can see that it, it, this is sometimes called a Dutch windmill, and here you can see the windmill, but it, a block by itself has the hearts and gizzard shape. Kind of pretty, I like it. Contrasting colors work great for this. Now on, the, on this particular template, it tells you exactly how large to cut squares and rectangles. No curves are going to be cut, but geometric shapes. And to make this smaller, eight and a half inch block, which finishes to eight inches, you're going to be asked to cut an eight and seven eighths, kind of an unusual amount, square, two squares, one of each color, and then cut from point to point so that you have four half square triangles. And you can see those right there. So that's set. You have these half square triangles, but now you're going to make the heart shapes. And with the template, you, it says on here that you can cut a six inch crosswise cut. It's really hard to read, but I can see it. And for this very smallest shape. I've started to do some tracing with a marking pen or pencil fabric marking pen. This one happens to wash out. And I align the top of it, top of the template with the top of the strip and trace the sides. And also trace the curve. 
kind of looks like little ice cream cones. Then rotate, do the alignment so that the red line at the top aligns with the fabric and trace. And after you've traced a whole slew of these, quite a few, you're going to do some cutting. And the cutting, you use a rotary cutter, ruler and mat. I'll grab my cutter. And don't cut the curves, just cut the straight lines so that you're going to have triangular shapes. So you can, I have to admit, you could cut two layers of fabric at once, but I usually just take a little, a little extra time and cut them singularly. So I have all these shapes. Now comes the interfacing. Cut strips two and a half inches to three and a half. For these large ones, we cut three and a half inches, but the instructions will be given for you, given to you. And this is two and a half inches of interfacing. I've seen them. Just overlap them together. And now place right sides together. So I'd place the edge along one, rotate it, give yourself a little space, pin it. And keep on doing this and pin the interfacing, or the, I should say the fabric triangle to the wedge. And now it's time to do the sewing, trimming, and finally the pressing. I took a little time after pinning the triangular shapes to the fusible interfacing to snug them a little closer together because the next step we're going to do is some trimming. You don't have to leave as much space because if you had the ends or the sides meeting then just make a cut between the two before you do the stitching. And so you'll have many sections that you're going to be sewing around that curve, that ice cream cone shape at the top. Now it's, it's quite a steep curve. So to do that stitching to make it easier and smoother, what you're going to do is set your stitch length, just, just a straight stitch, to 2.0 or 1.5 so that you can easily maneuver and just follow the tracing that's on this area. And you'll sew many, many shapes like that. Just sew round and around and around. And, or curve, curve, curve. And you could make small shapes, you could make larger shapes in the feature quilt. I use two different sizes. So you can see perhaps that here's one of the largest sizes and a medium size. It gives a nice kind of proportion that's not always the same. That's totally up to you. By the way, the instructions to create this quilt type are in the book that accompanies today's program. But you can make any size that you'd like. Now for some trimming. Use a pinking shears or a rotary cutter with a decorative blade and trim around the outer side of all the pieces and then trim on the in, in the interior and if you saw our first program in the series it's much the same way and I think I'm going to try to make that a little bit smoother. I have kind of a bump in the road there. So smooth that out. You get, m make sure it's double the width of the seam allowance and then turn right side out. Now this is a batik fabric so it looks kind of the same on both sides but you can see the start of the shape and run a, a bamboo shape or a, this is a plastic Hera marker around this curve to kind of reinforce that shape and that will help get it nice and round and just shape it out. Then move to your ironing surface, place it down and press. And after you've pressed it, when you pull it up, it's nice and curved and shaped in just the way you'd like it. Now you'll need two of these for each half square triangles. You'll put the lighter green on the dark fa fabric and you guessed it, the reverse for the other side and you pin it to each corner. And now it's time to stitch this into place. Now normally in all my quilt samples, my staff and I have used monofilament thread clear thread in the needle and matching thread to the fabric in the in the bobbin. But I'm going to use black thread so that you can see it a little bit easier. And I'm going to shorten the stitch length to two or one and a half even because you want this pretty straight but with a clear thread you can't see it at all. And then just top stitch. Top stitch to each corner and we also sew along the sides but I'm just going to do this top stitching along the edge. 
and just sew and sew around that edge. And after you've done that stitching, and you can see you're just using black thread, but you'd use clear thread to stitch all of it into place. You could also stitch the sides. You'd stitch four of these shapes, two to the dark, two to the light in opposite colors. And here we have the opposite color together. And you guessed it, you're going to put it back together. You've cut that square apart, and now you sew the side seam. Press it open. I like to press these seams open rather than the traditional pressing a quilting seam to one side because of the bulk. And you have a really interesting quilt block. If you'd like to vary it, you could put a heart on a square, seam two halves of the ice cream cone shape together, as we have here, and then place on a quilt block. Here's the little seam, place it on the block, and there you have a variation. Quilt blocks with fan motifs are common designs. The curved edges are traditionally turned under using a hand stitching technique called needle turn. If you're not fond of hand stitching, learn how to perfectly shape the curved edges with my fusible interfacing technique. If we look at the block that's on the de design wall that you just saw, it's in quadrants, four different sections, and it can be made as a unit as we have here or just a unit by itself. And the template that I'm going to be using for this is very easy, very comparable to the last shape that we just used for hearts and gizzards. But we have some options. We can have this section in the middle, a quarter circle, tri quarter circle section. We learned how to use that in the first program of this series. And I'll show you the variations of this. Contemporary design with not a lot of fan sections, easy to use. When we go back to looking at the template that I first used, it had a much deeper ice cream cone shape to create the heart. This one is much more gradual. And there are two options that you can have a center section that is very large, starting with an eight and a half inch circle or very sm or smaller, a six inch circle. So to work with this, I decided to use an eight and a half inch circle to begin with, and you'll see that later. And then I'm going to be working with the next to the largest shape, which will give me a block that's finished 22 inches. That's a big block. So to, to know how long to cut my strip, I just measure between those two markings, and it's six and a quarter inches. It's the same tracing technique, only you have a different shape. And you're going to be rotating the template and aligning this time two lines, and I've started, I've already traced three sections, and here is my line, the top edge, and I'll just align it here and the lower edge so I get things nice and straight. And this pen disappears with, the, it's dark, I realize, but it disappears when pressed. So you just trace the sides and the curve. And then just do a little rotation and do another one. And you do this, for example, we needed eight sections. Of, we use four different colors to do this block that's behind me. Someday this is going to be in a finished quilt. Then after tracing, then you cut apart, just like we did earlier for the heart shapes. And here I have two sections. Now we're making a fan shape, so just one fourth or what, one quadrant of what you see. And it works best if you take the two sections that you're going to be working with, meet right sides together, and sew just one seam. Just makes it faster. And on this section, it's been seamed and pressed open. The same interfacing idea, cut garment interfacing lightweight. In this instance, it's three and a half inches wide, and you sew to the interfacing. Then do the inverted image and place the next section down. And you could pin these all down, of course, before doing sewing, but just so you can see what's going to happen. And then cut, cut apart, cutting along this seam. And just like before, we'll be doing the turning, cutting and trimming and turning. And then you would trim 
along the inside and press just like before. Nothing different other than the shape is much more gradual. You place this on a square and top stitch with clear thread. Now to create the fan section in the first program of our series, I showed you how to make quarter circles. And if you have, didn't watch this, go online and watch the first program of this series and make a smaller, this is an eight and a half, started out as an eight and a half inch circle, and now it's placed in this area. A delicate contemporary fan made with the fusible interfacing technique. Our last carefree curve design, the wagon wheel block, can be made large or small. This block is a 24 inch square and really makes a statement. In this technique, I'm going to deviate from the fusible interfacing finish technique and show you that supersized blocks can have a bias edge finish, which adds interest and detail. There's always a change that can be made, and this is exactly what we did here. This huge block in the center happens to be 24 inches, and like the fan, it's made out of this from the same template, but notice the change, the adding of the detail of the bias trim. This is a bright, festive table runner for uh, out, in, out on the deck or if you have the southwest design. And like the other projects, you'll get the instructions how to make this in the book that accompanies the program. But now to make this, I'll give you the, the ideas. This size of the wedges are the same size that I use to make the ladies' fan. But rather than sewing just two sections together, I think you can figure this out. I stitched all eight, or all eight has been, have been sewn together. And notice that this inner section doesn't look too round. Well, that will be changed in just a few minutes. The size of the square to cut is, is printed on the template, or if you're using a different template, just make the size of the block the way you'd like it. And as I mentioned, it's a 24 inch block. So we folded the block in half excuse me, half and then in half again and press the folds to mark, to quarter mark this section. And then you open it up and align the wagon wheel with the creases. The seams will align right together. So you align this seam, let's see where we got a seam up here, one there, and it all kind of comes together. And then machine based, and I'm just going to pin it for you right now, but, but machine based along the edges to get it positioned. You don't have to use a center if you don't want to. You can just use the fabric that shows through from the background. Now trim. You could use bias tape, bias tape maker. You could buy bias tape. You could use a fusible quick bias. We chose these bright batik textile fabrics and to make a trim with a bias tape maker. This is going to have, be a half of an inch finished width. So we cut the width of the strip, it's bias, cut on the 45 degree angle one inch wide, double the width. And we inserted it through the wide end of the bias tape maker. And as I move this over to where I'm going to press my padded surface, as this comes out of the bias tape maker, it is folded ends to the middle. And we pre-folded this, but then I'm just going to, let me move it to the side so you can see a little better. As it moves, I'm just going to press so that it gets a nice press and a double edge. And as I pick this up, you can already see that it's pressed the, the sh long edges toward the middle. Then with a fabric glue stick or a paper glue stick, it really doesn't matter. I usually use just a paper glue stick or this is a fabric glue stick, position a little glue along the edges, and then you can do some shaping. Find, find the end and just mold this around the edge. Can't get much simpler than that. When you get around to the other side, turn under one edge so that you have a nice finish. As we look at the finished wagon wheel, do double top stitching and add some quilting and you have a dynamic look. My Nancy's Corner guest is one organized person. 
She shared with us in a previous segment last season how to clean, cull, and organize our creative areas. Today she's back to share with us the next logical step, how to set up our sewing and quilting rooms in zones. Please welcome back Gretchen Udock. Gretchen is a professional organizer of Reorganize Today. Gretchen, good to have you back Thank in you. the Nancy's Corner segment. And the last time, you, as I mentioned, you taught us to call and organize and you used the word spring, as in spring cleaning, as an acronym. And first we were to S to sort and then pare down, R, reuse, repurpose, recycle. And then I. Identify locations where you're going to put things. Yeah, yeah that's an important <laughs> one. N. Now is the time to buy containers. And then G. Got to put things away. So, okay, you've gotten kind of cleaned out and then there's a next step. And I like this idea of what you're going to tell us about. We're going to put our areas of um, sewing into zones. Just like you organize your kitchen in a work zone, you're going to organize your sewing room in work zone. So and on the kitchen, you have uh, the refrigerator, the stove, and the oven. And they're, or, and they're usually in a nice little triangle. Correct. And so here's your triangle. Right. We have our cutting area, sewing area, and ironing station. And that may seem logical, but I kind of know that I have, I don't always do that. And it the advantage, there's an advantage. Right, it just makes your sewing more efficient. And we wanna do as much as we can in the time we have to sew. Sure, so you liken this, I like this idea, you liken the triangle to a color wheel, the basic three primary colors. Right, we have red, yellow, and blue. So liken to these three areas, and then around the periphery, you have the complementary colors or the combined colors. Right, and if you have a serger, an embroidery, um, unit, mm -hmm. all of those things would be outside of your main triangle. Now you don't have to have a big space to do this. No, even a small little closet you can work all of your items, like items, together. You recently redid a, a friend's, or a client's I should mm -hmm. say, work and craft area and in the cutting area she did more than one thing. Right, she had a cutting area that was sitting in the middle of the room, so half of it we used for cutting fabric, the other half she could do her scrapbooking. Rarely would she be cutting both of those things at the same time. So you can see in this one image where her cutting area is for sewing, and then on the flip side of the table, that's where she had storage and for scrapbooking. Correct. Keep like things together. Right. You know, you said an interesting thing to me that if you don't store right, then you end up buying duplicates because you can't find things. That's very true. <laughs> I hate to admit that, <laughs> but I, I've fallen into that trap. And then the ironing, or the sewing area. Here's, her, here's Judy's sewing area. Right, and she has her embroidery machine and her sewing area, and her sewing machine, and she also has a little cutting station right there, but just for minor little things. The main cutting is done over at the cutting area. And I think this is important, you know, when I used to give some advice on this, I would say, you know, get your ironing board close so you don't have to get up. Oh, oh wrong. <laughs> we do need to move around once yeah. in a while while we're sewing too. Yeah. Get, get moving and enjoy the process, but don't be sedentary and sit around. Okay, so we have the cutting and the sewing and then the ironing area. Just have all of your ironing supplies together so that you're not running across the room to get spray starch or whatever else you need. Just have everything there, have a little drawer unit. Um, a basket works too, just mm -hmm. with all of your supplies in it. It looks pretty too, and things stay contained. You know, okay, I have to put my ironing supplies back into my basket. <laughs> and that's the key thing, putting things away. Once you find a home for them, put them back in that okay, space. Okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good idea. Then fabric, you know, the fabric you go to, but you don't often, once you choose it, it's a secondary area of storage. Correct, you want it near your cutting area so you can get mm -hmm. to your fabric, but you don't need it right on top of that space. Have it just off so it's not interfering with your triangle. So the zone again, the, as closing, cutting, sewing, and ironing. And get that together and you will be more efficient in your sewing. Gretchen, thanks for being our guest. Oh, you're very welcome. 
If you'd like to know more information about reorganizing today for your room, you can go to All Things Sewing with Nancy, which are at nancyzeman.com. You can re-watch this program, this two-part series on quilts with carefree curves. You can click on Nancy's Corner and find Gretchen's interview as well as 52 other interviews, or 51 other interviews, I should say, as well as 51 other programs to watch online and sign up for our blog. So again, at nancyzeman.com, you'll find all this information. Thanks for being with us. Bye for now. Nancy has designed a set of three templates and written a book that can be used to create the quilted projects featured in this program. The templates are $24.95 plus shipping and handling. Book is included free with purchase. To order this reference material as well as notions used during the series, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2714. Order item number BK2714, Quilt with Carefree Curves, Templates, and Free Book. To pay by check or money order, call the number on on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Oliso. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.